Take your hymnal one more time, and uh, before we get into the little message that I got, "Joy to the World" is uh, number four twenty-three, and uh, we won't sing it, but I want to read it because, uh, as I mentioned, "Joy to the World." When I started to look at that hymn, I started to realize that man, that not just that doesn't just talk about his birth, but it talks about future events that are yet to take place. When you look at that first verse, it says, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Of course, we looked at that. But then it says, Let earth receive her king. Uh, let every heart prepare him room. And uh, it says in that, uh, that's that third line, And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Uh, go back up to the second verse. It says, Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. And I showed our class when we were talking about that, I said, you know, really, the Lord's not reigning yet. There is, there is a king on this earth, but it's really not the Lord. He's in a priestly robe right now, uh, going, to, going to the Father on our behalf. He has on his pre priestly robe, but he doesn't have on his king's robe. Uh, he's on the right hand of the, uh, of the throne of God, but he's not on the throne of earth. And uh, does anybody know who the king of the earth is? The devil. What do they call him? The prince of the power of the earth. air. Yes, the prince and prince of the power of the air. And uh, so, just as I said, when we read through this, uh, joy to the world doesn't just stop with the birth of Christ, but it tells us a lot about uh, the future. It says, "No more let sins." Verse uh, verse three says, "No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns." Uh, thorns infest the ground. Uh, he comes to make his blessings flow. Uh, has Christ come back yet? No. No, that's future. And uh, so what I want to look at tonight, and if you have your Bible, you can follow along with me. And uh, But I, I come up with a title tonight of, but wait, that's not all. And uh, where I got that from is uh, someone asked on the web, how do you explain Christmas to your children? And they were asking it as kind of like on a, a, a how would you say it on like a, uh, a, 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 a they were they were not saying there's a right and wrong way but they were just asking to kind of uh, find out the different ideas of what people do uh, to teach their kids about Christmas and uh, I I responded and said well what you need to do is not stop at the birth of Christ you need to take it all the way through the Bible to uh, through his through his death, burial, and resurrection, and uh, through his coming again. And I said, that's really the whole story of Christmas. And that's where I came up with my title, but wait, that's not all. And so tonight, when we're here celebrating the birth of Christ, we need to realize, but wait, that's not all. Uh, when we go down and look at these manger scenes, and we see that little baby in that, in that, uh, that um, uh, little manger scene, when we're looking at that baby, we know that he's not there anymore. We know that he grew up and he went to the cross uh, for us. And so when you look at that manger scene, what we need to do is when our kids look with us and we take little kids to explain the manger scene to them, what we need to tell them is, but wait, that's not all. And so what I did is I kind of put, uh, uh, turning your, your, uh, hip, uh, your Bible to the Gospel of Luke, and I pieced together the Christmas story. And... Uh, but I don't stop just at the birth of Christ. So turn to Luke chapter 1, and I want you to think about this as we're reading it. And I'll read it, and you just follow along with me. And I'm going I'm to take us through um, the story of Christ. And, uh, but what we need to realize is it's, it has much more to do with than just the birth of Christ. And so, so turn in your uh, Bibles, if you have one. Uh, to Luke chapter 1, we'll start in verse 26, and I'll read it to you. And I want you to really think about what we're reading. And uh, if you don't have a Bible, if you don't want to turn to, to it, I can you know, just listen and you'll hear the, uh, the gospel story. But here's where it, uh, it all began. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. It says, and in the sixth month, are you there with me? Give me a chance. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. It says, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou 
that uh, thou that art uh, highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Now, now, mind you, that little uh, bit that we read in Matthew, that gave a very succinct, very uh, um, uh, big overview, a uh, quick overview of what took place. This goes a little bit more in detail. And it says in uh, verse 29, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Now listen to this. This is how it took place. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a, uh, a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall, uh, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now, has he done that yet? No. No. He's not sitting on the throne. And so that's yet future. And so even when we read the Christmas story, um, it's trying to tell us that, folks, don't, don't just stop here. I mean, there's things that are yet to happen. And so in other words, but wait, that's not all. So then in verse 33 it says, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Uh, is he reigning right now? No. Has, his, has, his king, has he even set up his kingdom? No. no. And so then it says in verse 34, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, this co uh, thy cousin Elizabeth, she, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. Uh, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary rose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. There's all kinds of things happening that has never happened before and has never happened again since. And it says in verse 42, And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, of thy womb. and whence is this to me, that the, thy, the mother of my Lord should come to me. Uh, continue to read, look at uh, uh, verse 44, for, for lo, as soon as the voice of the salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit is rejoiced in God my uh, Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them with low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things. The rich he has sent empty away. He has opened, uh, that means helped. He has opened his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to the, his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Now what I say is, but wait, that's not all. Look at chapter 2. Chapter 2 says, And it came to pass in those days that there, was, uh, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth and, uh, into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house in lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Now, you know what's funny? She's great with child. She's, you know, when he first found out, she was probably... I don't know, days into her pregnancy. She's now into like her ninth month. And they're still a spouse. 
That means they still have never consummated their marriage. That means there's no doubt that that man's seed had anything to do with this. Because even here in, in her later months, uh, almost ready to give birth, it still says they were a spouse. They had never consummated the marriage. They had never come together physically. So then it says, and so it was, verse 6, that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings for great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you uh, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And it says, it says, uh, and they came with haste and found Mary and, and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they were they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. And look at verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her, her hearts. But wait. That's not all. Turn to uh, 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 the last part of chapter 2 and start in verse 41. Because what we're looking at is, is this, the, the story of Christ goes much farther than just the manger. Because now look at verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, oh my, that baby come out of the manger. It says, Now when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the, uh, of the uh, doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Or why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. But wait, that's not all. Turn to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, and I'll look at verse 14. Luke chapter 4, starting in verse 14. I'll give you a chance to get to Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a, a, a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogue, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Uh, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up uh, for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptance uh, acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. 
And he began to say unto them, and look what he says, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. In other words, go back to verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He's proclaiming himself as the Lord's Savior. Then verse 20 says, And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? So they can't detach themselves from thinking about him being physical. And, and then verse 23 says, And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me, Now, now mind this verse. Keep this verse in mind in just a few minutes. And he said unto them, Ye will surely send me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. You, do you know when they said that to him? Yes, he was on the cross. And they said, you know, why not get yourself down? You'll see it in just a minute. Yeah, it says, and he said unto them, Ye will surely send me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Now, how did he know that? Because of God. It says, Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, uh, Capernaum, I'm sorry, Capernaum, uh, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I send you, no prophet, prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you the truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut. Uh, up three years and six months when great famines throughout all land, but unto none of uh, but unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, uh, a city of Sidon, uh, Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in it for Israel in the time of Elias, uh, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving name of the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Now what happened was, that little baby Jesus, oh how precious he was, the world's turning against him. But wait, that's not all. Turn to uh, Luke chapter 22. Going pretty fast now, Luke chapter 22. And uh, look at, uh, look at uh, um, verse 1. Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 1. It says, Now the feast of the old leaven bread drew nine, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, uh, uh, into Judas, surname Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains, how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted uh, to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou uh, that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good men of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the great chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished uh, there make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This, is, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined, but woe unto the man by whom he is betrayed. But wait, that's not all. Look at verse 47. It says, And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them, and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, 
Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with a sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and, uh, and said, Suffer ye thus far? And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests, the captains of the temple, and the elders which were come to him, Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves? When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. But wait, that's not all. Look at chapter 23. Chapter 23. And uh, look at verse 26. And as they led him away, they laid upon one uh, Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people, of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming, and the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in, in, uh, in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there was also two others, male factors, led with them to be uh, put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, where they crucified him, the male factors, one on the right hand and one on the left, uh, the other on the left, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the pe people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. And I go back to when he said, you'll, you'll in the future say to me, physician, heal thyself. So then it says, if he be Christ, the chosen of God, and the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, this is the king of Jews. But wait, that's not all. Look at verse 44. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over the earth until the ninth hour. It says, and the sun uh, was darkened, and the veil of the temple was right in the midst. And it says, and when Jesus cried, uh, when Jesus cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that site, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all the acquaintance of the woman that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a, uh, a man named Joseph, the counselor. He was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the council and did uh, indeed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. And this man went into Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in the sepulcher that was hewn in stone, where in never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation of the Sabbath drew on. And the woman also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandments. And then it says in chapter 24. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came and unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found out the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed, thereabout, behold, two men stood by him, them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto him, uh, To them, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with him, or with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to uh, them as idle tales, and they believed them not. 
Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, stooping down, beheld the many clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering uh, himself at that which was come to pass. But wait, that's not all. Look at uh, verse 36, same chapter, Luke 24. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye so troubled? And why do, you, why do your thoughts rise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that is, I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Right from the beginning of his birth, all the way through to where we're at right now. It says, Then opened he under their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, This Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. But wait, that's not all. Turn to Acts. We're almost done. Turn to Acts chapter 1. You might say, well, what's this got to do with us? Turn to Acts chapter 1 and verse 9 through 11. Acts chapter 1 verse 9, it says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. This overlaps the last part of Luke. And it says, again, and when, they had, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. But wait, that's not all. See, he's telling his disciples uh, to get busy, I'm coming back. And really, when we sing that song, Joy to the World, it's talking about his future reign and him coming back. Now, our last verse, our last scripture, turn to 1 Corinthians, because I want to bring it into our realm. 1 Corinthians. Who wrote 1 Corinthians? Paul did. Who is he writing to? Yep. Yeah. So he's writing to the church. Are we a church? Yep. Yeah. Amen. We sure are. Is a church a building? No. No. Yes. Absolutely. It's the body of Christ. Amen. And so look at First Corinthians and uh, uh, chapter eleven in verse twenty-three. Have you ever wondered why you do the Lord's Supper? Because look what it says. How many times do we do the Lord's Supper? Once a year. How many times do we do Christmas? Once a year. Once a year. And what do we do Christmas for? For Christ. Yeah, it's for us. You know what it is? It's just like the Lord's Supper in a way. You know what the Lord's Supper is for? We do it once a year, and you know what it is? It's a remembrance. Look what it says. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in yes, remembrance of me. What are we here for tonight? In remembrance of Christ. Not just a little baby. I told our Sunday school class, I said, you know, if you go gaze at that baby, I don't know if the baby in, a, in, a, in this 
uh, manger scene down here has its eyes open. But I said, if you was to go out and look in the eyes of that baby, I said, what you're doing is looking into the eyes of God. Now, I know that that baby is not Jesus Christ. I know that baby, you know, I know Christ came out of that manger scene. I know Christ went to the cross. But still, the, same, the mentality we should have is Christmas, uh, uh, Lord's Supper, Easter, no matter what it is. It's all the remembrance of our Lord and Savior, who is yet to come. Amen. He's come, went to the cross, atoned for our sins, but he's going to come and rule and reign. And we're going to rule and reign with him. It says there in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, For I have received the, uh, of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. You know what we do for Christmas? As often as you do. Like. participate in it as often as you celebrate Christmas we should be in the mindset that we do it to show the Lord's birth until he come we know he, we know he has been born amen and we know the story of exactly what he did for us that's what Christmas is all about he's not just a baby he went to that cross yep Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful, Lord. I pray that you continue to bless us. And Lord, we sure are thankful for your goodness and your mercy. And Lord, we uh, do pray, uh, Lord, we do pray that we would be mindful that just like those folks.